This is New Day Northwest. Now, here's Margaret Larson. Good morning and welcome to New Day Northwest. We are starting Wellness Wednesday off with a health topic dominating headlines. Before the outbreak in China, coronavirus was not a household name, but it is now. As of this morning, cases of COVID-19 have been reported in 40 countries. With a busy travel season ahead of us today, we get important updates from Dr. Helen Chu, an infectious diseases specialist at UW Medicine. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having um, me. COVID-19, what does it mean? So COVID-19 refers to coronavirus um, isolated in 2019 from Wuhan, China. So the year that it was um, discovered. It's a new coronavirus, so it's not like the other coronaviruses that mm -hmm. cause colds in humans. Um, it came from a bat originally, and then, um, and then it probably went to another animal and then to humans. What are the symptoms? So it, the symptoms actually start like many other respiratory viruses, cough, shortness of breath, some people get fever, some people get a little bit of nausea or abdominal discomfort, and then in some people it then leads to more severe symptoms like pneumonia. How do you diagnose it? Um, it's, it's a diagnosis using a molecular test. So you take a Q-tip essentially and put it up your nose. Um, you take that sample and you put it in a tube of fluid. And then right now um, in the United States, we send that sample to the Centers for Disease Control. To Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, it, and there's some thought that some of the new tests may not be very dependable. Do we have enough tests if we get an outbreak in the U.S.? Um, so the new tests that were initially sent from the CDC to the state, those have now been fixed and they are now dependable. Um, but no, we do not have enough tests here and there aren't enough tests around the world. And that's one of the key limitations and being able to understand how much disease there is, is the, the ability to diagnose people. How do you treat this? So right now there's not a lot that you can do other than supportive treatment. So uh, what you would do is uh, give people, um, bring people into the hospital if they're critically ill, give them fluids, watch them, watch for evidence of having a bacterial infection in their lungs, treat the bacteria if it's there, but not a whole lot that we can do specifically for COVID-19. So All there's right. no vaccine. Um, it, there was a company that, that was mentioned yesterday in the Wall Street Journal mm -hmm. um, as per, potentially having a vaccine, but mm -hmm. then um, the, the institutes for health said, no, that's 12 to 18 months away. Mm -hmm. Is that your understanding? So there's a lot of different companies that are racing to make a vaccine. Um, we know that the structure of the virus, so it's been qu easy to go forward from that and start designing things that may potentially uh, cause uh, a protective response. The problem is that for that vaccine to be tried out in humans in the different phases that we have to go through to make sure it's safe and that it works, and then to, to manufacture it right. at scale, that's, that's the issue. That's why it'll take 12 to 18 months. Okay, let's talk about prevention. Uh -huh. um, how do you get this? What are you looking for? It's the same as flu. So coughing within six feet of a person who's infected. So stay six feet away from people who are sick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> are people more contagious? I've, I've heard you can get this even mm -hmm. when they are not symptomatic. Are people more contagious as they are more symptomatic? We don't think so. We think people are contagious when they have the most amount of virus. Um, and it seems like the most amount of virus is before they get maximally symptomatic. Okay, that's a problem. It is a problem. Right? And it's different from all of the other viruses. It's, it's, it's behaving slightly differently in that mm -hmm. you can infect people when you're just feeling kind of crummy, but you're not really um, very, very sick. Another kind of um, interesting aspect of it is I read that this virus can live on surfaces mm -hmm. for quite a while. What do we know about that? Um, so we don't know exactly how long. It will probably live for a couple of hours like the other coronaviruses, but it's easy to kill. Um, it's easily uh, wiped away with alcohol wipes. Um, if you use bleach, that works. I mean, th it's an easy virus to get rid of. Okay, what about Lysol? Lysol's like fine. Those wipes. Mm -hmm. You wipe down surfaces and you're good with that. Yes. Tell me how we protect ourselves. Stay away from people if they're sick. If you're um, sick, stay, stay home. home. If you are sick, please. And then cleaning surfaces and washing your hands, what do we need to know? Yeah, I think just washing your hands with soap and water is, is always the best to prevent getting coronavirus as well as flu. And then um, when you don't have access to soap and water, then using alcohol-based hand sanitizer, um, cleaning the surfaces around you, especially if you travel. Mm -hmm. And then um, the face masks, there's you know, not a lot of data on whether or not face masks are useful to keep you from getting sick. We know that if you are sick and you wear a mask, you, you protect others around you. You, but there's I don't I don't know that we know so okay. I know there are a lot of people wearing but them if you are sick 
you should certainly wear good idea. face masks if you have coronavirus. Now this has this has the N95 filter. Mm -hmm. Is that important? I mean, we see the kind of masks that are sold at the drugstore. What sort of mask is actually effective if you were diagnosed with coronavirus? So surgical masks are fine. Um, we say N95s out of an abundance of precaution because we just don't know yet. But most likely it's going to be surgical. For the time being, if you are a person who is known to have coronavirus, you would just follow the direction of public health, whatever they tell you to do. Okay. At, at this point, they would tell you to wear this. But we'll see. We'll see how things go in the future as we get more information. Okay, let's talk about travel. I'm mm -hmm. going overseas next month. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> so, um, let's talk about what you do, uh, whether you're in the country or out of the country, you're on an airplane, what do you do? Right, so f the first thing you do is you want to go to the CDC travel website and see um, which country you're going to and what the recommendation is. So there are certain countries that are level three, which is basically don't go there, mm -hmm. China and South Korea, and then there are countries like um, Iran, Italy, where they say level two, so only go if absolutely necessary. Don't go if you have certain conditions, like you have chronic lung disease. So, um, so after you do that, and if your country is not one of those countries, okay. then um, it would just be sort of the common sense things, you know, um, cough into your elbow, wipe your surfaces when you get on the plane with a bleach wipe, carry hand sanitizer with you. And when we're talking about washing your hands with soap and water, mm -hmm. for how long and how often? So I think if you are coughing and you think you're sick, or if you're touching lots of surfaces, you would just want to wash after that um, for 30 seconds. With um, soap. With soap and water. Um, and then the, the hand sanitizer, the really important thing to remember about hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer is you need to rub long enough for it to evaporate because that's how it works. Okay, so the CDC said yesterday, mm, not sure about this, it seems like it's out in the world now mm -hmm. and that it might last till next year mm -hmm. and could be something that we have to manage and we need to be alert in the U.S. Um, what is the latest thinking about what will happen in terms of the spread? Yeah, I think it's it's a big black box right now. Um, part of it is that we just don't know. We've only really seen the tip of the iceberg, the people who are very sick, um, who are in the hospital, but we don't actually have a good sense of the denominator, you know, who's kind of sick, who's not really sick but still carrying the virus, um, how many people who get sick get, um, get hospitalized and how many people die. And until we start looking, and that's going to start happening in the United States, we're going to be starting to do testing um, more broadly, mm -hmm. um, then we'll have a better sense of, of how bad it will be. Yesterday, the administration's senior economic advisor said that the virus was contained within the U.S. It mm -hmm. is contained, was the That's direct right. quote. Is that correct? That's correct. There's no evidence of community transmission in the United okay. States. And that means community transmission is it starts to multiply within a cluster of people. Right, right. Th that's correct. There's certainly been um, one or two cases, I think, of within household close contact transmission, and, but that's not considered community transmission. Community transmission is really sort of transmission to people that you're not intensely in contact with with like people in your own house. What is the lethality of this compared to the typical influenza that we see? I think it's more lethal than influenza, but I don't think we know. We don't know for sure. Right. And are there people, you mentioned older people, people with uh, compromised immune systems. We mm -hmm. There have been some reports that men were, were contracting this more often than women in China, but there could be lots of factors for that. Do we know anything about that? Yeah, I think, again, um, th it seems like if you're older and you have chronic lung conditions, so if you have emphysema or COPD or asthma, those are risk factors for doing worse. Um, the male versus female thing, it's hard to know. You know, initially it was thought that the reason why there were so many men getting sick was because they were the workers at the seafood market. Mm -hmm. But now it's not looking like that's the case. And it's still a little bit more men than women in larger case studies. The question of whether kids get sick is also a, a an unanswered one. We don't know. Um, kids tend to do better with respiratory viruses um, than adults do we with know coronaviruses. Why? We always think kids are sick so much. I know. <laughs> they I go know. to school and they get sick and they come home, but for some reason they do. Yeah, relatively I, better with this. I'm not sure, I, and I don't know that, that we we are sure that they do better. We just haven't seen that many cases in children okay, yet, or diagnosed good. cases. Good. Okay. Important correction. You're going to stick around for our wellness panel. I'm I sure will. we'll have lots mm -hmm. more questions, but this is a good start about <laughs> just you know how to think about this for the time.